Hello guys and gals, time is truly cyclical, ladies and gentlemen. The controversies of yesteryear still somehow managed to come in today's day and age. Now I'm going to rip the band-aid off and talk about something. The Resident Evil game that can't be remade. <laughs> it's time to start rewriting, not remaking, boyos. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Resident Evil 5 is a game that I would not consider to be a good Resident Evil game. It's a great game, a great action game, but I wouldn't consider it to be survival horror. It's a game that is quite definitively a product of its time, right? Like, this is an era where games like Gears of War with their cooperative play were at the peak, even their cover systems. This is an era where Call of Duty and every modern military game and movie, by the way, was like on its peak popularity. This is an era where a piss filter in a video game was basically a necessity, okay? It's almost as if every game engine almost had to have it in order to work on the actual gaming systems available. Resident Evil 5 is a game that took Call of Duty style action oriented segments, the Gears of War cooperative, and the piss filter to the absolute extreme. You know, comparing it to Resident Evil games from the PlayStation 1 era, it's almost uh, it's, 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 it's almost like looking at two separate games. Now, there was a game before RE5 that you all know as Resident Evil 4 that kind of changed the way that the franchise would go forward for the worst. See, RE4 was the one game where instead of having, like, you know, tank control... Well, it, it did have tank controls. But instead of having, like, you know, fixed camera angles, it had more emphasis on, obviously, action. The graphics got upgraded. The environments looked more expansive. But at the same time, you started to get rid of some of that backtracking and a lot of the stuff that would make Resident Evil, you know, a Resident Evil game. CRE5, because of the success of 4, ended up being one of Capcom's best-selling games up until Monster Hunter World, where they would basically take that same uh, Resident Evil 4 DNA and just basically take away the survival horror. Like, eh, any, any horror, get out of it. Co-op? Throw that shit in there, okay? The game wasn't, the franchise wasn't scary to begin with. Might as well do it with another boy, okay? Might as well play it with another one of your lads, all right? Goon together, what they say. <laughs> right? That's how it is. But uh, Resident Evil 6 took that even to a further extreme, where it, instead of having any form of horror or even the thought of, like, conserving ammunition, the game just gave you mags and told you to dump everything in sight. And obviously, it wasn't until Resident Evil 7 that the franchise basically resurrected Corrected itself, and uh, now we have Resident Evil basically at a peak that it honestly never even was back in the day. It's it's more popular than it's ever been. Now, Resident Evil 5 is a special game because it's one of the Resident Evil titles that has had one of the wildest controversies at its time: the racism controversy. Now, Resident Evil 5 is the one Resident Evil game that takes place in Africa. And obviously, as you know, in Africa, there is a lot of African people. In West Africa, the primary demographic is black people. And one of the characters they introduced to the franchise, reintroduced, was Chris Redfield. A white guy, and a pretty roided up white dude. So when you had images of this guy stomping on the faces of black people and just laying waste, there was a bit of a racism allegation being tossed around. So I'm going to show you some of the original footage trailers for it, too. Obviously, this is Chris right over here. Before he decided to roid up, walking through what appears to be this beautiful pre-rendered image of West Africa. You've got a bunch of zombies over here. And obviously, nobody was really shocked by any of this. And of course, this is when, like, the gameplay even got more identified as well, too. So you got Chris now roided up. Thank God. All right, let's not forget the, uh, let's not forget the era where this man basically had to survive heart palpitations all the way through. But he's walking through this village, and uh, everything seems like it's pretty hunky-dory and fine. Now, obviously, the images of him being chased around by African villagers with, like, giant, like, machetes, and obviously this gameplay over here where he's engaging in this combat was obviously called out by a few individuals. Now, I will say some of this gameplay never ended up making it through. These kind of hordes never really ended up getting into the final game. The amount of him dodging actual machetes never ended up making it. But what is important is the game didn't even showcase Sheva Alomar, the co-op partner, at all in any of this material. Now, Sheva is a, you know, African black character in the entire game as well. So when you play cooperatively, you're always alongside her. But she wasn't really shown in any of these early trailers. It was literally just this white guy shooting around black dudes. And that's pretty much what sparked a lot of these racism debates. 
Now, for a grand majority of people who talk about this and have played Resident Evil, really know that it's not an actual racist game. It's not made with, like, racist intentions. At no point is this game equivalent to something, uh, you know, like eth like the, the ethnic cleansing game that was actually made by real neo-Nazis, for crying out loud. This is a game that was made by Japanese developers that, quite frankly, are a little bit out of touch with the rest of the world, or at least a Western perspective of these controversies being made. Now at the time, MTV, when they did gaming stuff, I don't even know if MTV is a thing anymore, actually had an interview with the game's producer, Jun Takeuchi, where they actually talked about this controversy itself. They discussed how the game actually had cooperative play with Sheva, but of course, if you were single player, you would only play as Chris. This is, again, an era of gaming where co-op was popular. So obviously going in further over here, they talk about, again, racism, because that was a massive controversy that occurred at the time. So during inside here, when MTV multiplayer is like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, the way people talk about the game and some of the reactions, oh, is this a racist game? A lot of that has died off, but we on the MTV gaming blog actually published one of these interviews that got a lot of reactions. We interviewed a gaming journalist who talked about his feelings when he saw the trailer, and he talked about, I don't feel like anybody black worked on this game. That was his gut reaction. To which Takeuchi says, no, we certainly didn't anticipate the reaction. We were quite surprised by the reaction that came out. I think everyone understands that we never set out to with the intention to make anything that was racist. That was never our intention. We think it is quite a bit of misunderstanding when we published the first images of the game back in the day. And we think that as we move along and allow people to see more of the game and more of what's going on and the story, people will get a better idea. So obviously they were keen on showing Sheva, they were keen on showing Josh Stone, and they were keen on showing my favorite pilot in the franchise, who by the way, gave his life so Chris could survive and turn into an alcoholic down the road. Of course, even further into it, obviously Takeuchi never expected it. He says that certainly the most important things we've learned is that different countries do see the same things in different ways. I think it's very important as we go along to start other projects to learn from other countries and learn from other companies who are working in the video game and entertainment sectors. So it really does seem like a group of individuals, homogenous society being Japan, really didn't understand the entire context or the post-colonial implications that we here in the United States, Canada, and a lot of these like, you know, multicultural country see. When you live together in amongst various different people of color, then you probably know a lot about each other's shit. And there's obviously tensions that constantly keep being brought up as time goes on. Look, I like to make nuanced videos. I don't like to make these pandery videos. I like to see every side and I try to like to understand as much as I can. And I like to have a discussion about this kind of stuff. I'm not here to say that Resident Evil 5 isn't a totally racist game or it doesn't have depictions that probably don't age that well, but we'll get into it. So while I front loaded you guys with a lot of things, the reason why this video is a thing is IGN contributes to this same controversy, by the way, in the year 2024, the Resident Evil game that can't be remade. So obviously they're talking about Resident Evil 5. So inside over here, they have a few things they talk about. RE is a survival horror series. Not that you know that, playing Resident Evil 5, and obviously they're true. This is a game that they consider an unholy hybrid of Resident Evil, Gears of War, and Call of Duty. Obviously, I can agree. The piss filters, the cover systems, the car chases, the one car chase, by the way, uh, it actually has a big tonal change from previous Resident Evil games. It's definitely more action. That's for sure. Then it says RE5 presents its enemies as waves to be gunned down with increasingly powerful weaponry. Their purpose is cannon fodder, a wall of meat to slow your progress through levels. And those levels are not locations to be explored. Instead, they're largely funnels that push you from entrance to exit. So obviously, uh, to paraphrase here, Resident Evil 5's world is not meant to necessarily be explored. It's just point A to point B, which I do agree with. But to say that the enemies are just walls of meat to slow you down. Brother, that's like every Resident Evil game out there. What the fuck are you talking about? Every zombie is meant to be a little bit of wall. Otherwise, you'd just be running through derelict streets getting from point A to B. Get out of here. So here's where the actual part of the article is really kind of like obviously igniting people. So the game is set in a West fictional, uh, fictional West African country. Resident Evil 5's primary antagonists are black people. 
Yes, technically it's the Ouroboros virus that protagonist Chris Redfield is fighting, but the parasite's host is depicted as a nation of mobs and primitives who are violent even before their infection. Intentionally or not, Resident Evil 5 positions Africa as the dark continent, an uncivilized world harboring a disease population that needs gunning down via Western intervention in the name of global security. So again, it's a bit of a misrepresentation of the story of Resident Evil 5. Yes, there are aspects in Resident Evil 5 where there is actually an ethnic cleansing campaign between like two tribes. That's usually what the beginning of the game is kind of about or at least it alludes to it. Now, there are sections in the game that I think portray uh, the country or the region in a more poor light, stuff that's a little bit unexplained. Like, I'll never be able to explain the blonde lady being grabbed and, like, infected. That has, like, no story bearing, and I have no reason why they decided to put that game in other than making, go making people go, ah, oh, that's a little weird. But, yes, there are actual problems with ethnic cleansings and tribe warfare in Africa to this day, and especially around the time this game came out. So it's not something that was actually developed in an unfounded way. Unfortunately, these kind of horrific truths still happen. If this game gets remade, I don't want them to eliminate this aspect of the game at all. In fact, I want them to touch upon it by providing a realistic view of this part of the world so people who are playing the game can actually go, oh shit, things are wrong. Maybe we should try doing things a little bit differently, or maybe we should pay more attention to the welfare of these people and making the area better. So anyways, the next paragraph is, the insensitive treatment of people of color was hotly debated, even as early as Resident Evil 5's debut trailers, pointing out the game's uncomfortable post-colonial imagery. These arguments and think pieces continued well into the game's release window, with IGN's own former editor-in-chief, having wrestled with the subject. But that was 2009, a time when race was apparently a debate rather than a reality. In a 2020s post-Black Lives Matter world, there is only one acceptable response to a white man shooting waves of Africans for an entire video game. No! <laughs> it's like they completely ignored the reason why this is happening. In fact, there's actually a great political like discussion that happens in Resident Evil 5 too. See, the reason why a lot of these, like, villagers are actually infected in this way is because of a company in the game known as Tricell. See, towards the end of 4, and again, Resident Evil 5 is getting a remake. It's not a matter of if, it's really just when. Towards the end of the game, Wesker basically gets access to the Las Plagas virus, or at least it's alluded that he basically has access to the virus that affected the villagers in 4. So while having access to it, he works along a company known as Tricell, using their resources to spread uh, this virus in amongst the people down there. And these people have, like, they're innocent people. They have nothing they can do. They're literally being exploited by these individuals. And that is, in turn, is what brings this virus out. Africa is used as a testing bed because of its uh, unfortunate levels of instability. Before that virus could, in my, from my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Resident Evil Lord, lore aficionados, that virus is then used in China, in, in Twin Peaks, the United States, to basically spread a global, you know, complete global saturation of an entire <laughs> virus that is intended to turn people into mindless slaves for one uh, Albert Wesker. That's my understanding of the story right here. So no, it's not a story where Chris puts on his clan gear and walks down the streets of West Africa and just guns anybody down. These people are infected, and unfortunately, that's the only reason Chris responds in the way that he does. He is first and foremost a pro an actual trained proper military operator first and foremost with the BSAA. This game also fails to, this article fails to talk about like how Sheva and Josh are actually pretty well-written characters, even though I don't really see them represented at all in modern uh, Resident Evil. That needs to change. But they're also forgetting about the best goddamn pilot that, by the way, if it wasn't for him, Chris Chris wouldn't be an alcoholic in Eastern Europe and, and the whole Resident Evil 6, 7 storyline wouldn't be happening. But that's a whole different thing. Remakes are meant to redefine their source material. But if you take Africa out of RE5, is it even RE5 anymore? No, it's not. I do agree that maybe the writing can be a little bit more sensitive on the actual topics and probably discuss more of this kind of stuff in a more uh, logical manner, sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe show people the grim horror realities, but at the end of the day, these are B-movie style games. They're meant to be delivered in a way where you don't really have to think too deep into their stories. They're fucking 
zombie games at the end of the day. Now, of course, this is the reason, this is one of the things that I wanted to look into this article for. Uh, obviously, uh, there were people that brought up some <laughs> points of contention, right? There, there are actually racist depictions, I would say, borderline very. So chapter three, the marshlands, is where you actually go into like the real backwoods of West Africa. You actually go into like, you know, a, a tribal area and tribes exist to this day. There are tribes in Africa that are completely disconnected from society and they have no real understanding or grasp of modern technological methods. They literally live in an almost prehistoric way. They live in, 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 in a world without technology, a world very much we have forgotten if you're watching this video. So yeah, tribes exist and what had effectively happened was one of the tribes was represented in a very, very, very cartoonishly, I would say, uh, insensitive way. We're talking about people that were fighting with spears, shields, jumping around with face paint and short skirts and whatnot. It is a portion of the game that obviously made even the reviewers at the time a little unnerved. They were like, yeah, it's kind of fucking weird, boys. And of course, there's actually an explanation to this too, because of course there would be. In one of the actual notes that you can find in chapter three, the village youth diary, they actually discuss exactly what happened and why the villagers look so stereotypical in the town. So for instance, April 5th, a man who said he was the foreman of the oil plant came to visit us today. He said he wants to inoculate everyone living near the oil field against some kind of disease. In my parents' generation, they tricked our people and stole the land to turn into their oil field. They must feel guilty about that because they're always trying to help out the village now. When we couldn't get across the swamp, they build a gondola on the rope for us. Sometimes they will even give us alcohol from foreign countries. This medicine is probably something like that. Everyone in our village is glad to receive this medicine, but I don't want it. I have no reason for not getting it. I just don't like the way the foreman looks, that's all. So again, they go down. Everyone went to the oil field to get this inoculation. The village is usually never this quiet. The only thing to do today is sleep. I slept too much during the day and I couldn't sleep at night. It was noisy outside. Everyone was talking in serious voices in the middle of the village. All the, all the children in the village had come down with a fever. The mothers all drew water to cool their babies, but it didn't help. By the next morning, they were all dead. In the morning, our leader went to the oil field. He wanted to know if the medicine they were given uh, killed the children. When he came back to the village, he said the children died because they had the disease. He told everyone that they needed to go back for more shots. I didn't want to, but everyone in the village was worried about catching the disease. They forced me to go with them and get the shots. People are fighting in the village. All the men are very angry. It might be because all the children died, but I think it's something else. And obviously it's the itchy, scratchy, you know, dialogue, the, 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 we're turning into zombies. This is my daily diary. And of course, how they discuss this is I couldn't sit still today. I felt something moving inside me. Outside, I saw a man who looked strange. He was naked and had a weapon. His entire body was covered in war paint. It wasn't even festival day. So the people that dressed up like, you know, villagers, <laughs> they don't dress up like that fucking normally. That, that was just there because they decided to get in touch with their native side, apparently because of this virus, implicating that the virus would regress them to this like almost, you know, old school way that they had. Really weird shit, okay? Really wild stuff. That is the actual lore explanation of why that happened in Resident Evil. Now, obviously, even IGN's editor at the time and, and, the, and the people reviewing them, who, by the way, rated the game as 9.4 out of 10 or something, 9.3 out of 10, they even talked about their idea of racism in this title as well. There's been a fair amount of media discussion around the question of whether Resident Evil 5 has racist overtones due to its African settings and the fact that the main character is a white man shooting black people. I personally don't find RE5 to have an overly racist feel but I did find one aspect of it a bit disturbing. It was a bit strange to realize I was wandering around Africa stealing the region's gold, precious gems, and expensive native treasures, which I then cashed in to pay for weapon upgrades. Add in the fact that I ended up killing the parasitically infected villagers and townspeople of the area with said weapons, and the discomfort first comes full circle. You know, it's funny how like every time the protagonist of a Resident Evil franchise, usually American, actually almost all the time, goes into any poor village, whether it be in Spain, Romania, <laughs> or Africa, steals all their shit, buys weapons, and wipes the floor with them. And then they get heralded as the hero. It's kind of insane how Capcom went down that route. But yeah, I think the idea of black people and a white character being in Africa is not something that's completely out of the realm. If you're a normal person, you probably look at this and think, 
Yeah, that's to be expected. You know, again, I've never seen these kind of allegations brought up to like, oh, what about Resident Evil 6? We're shooting these comically, uh, you know, stereotypical looking Chinese people in wet markets in China as you fight through the infected. Nor am I seeing the weird depiction of, you know, <laughs> rural Spain being depicted as fucking medieval towns. <laughs> that I've never seen. But again, when it comes to, you know, Africa, obviously there's a bit of nuance. It's a region of the world that's mired in instability. Clearly there's going to be a few differing thoughts. And that's pretty much where this controversy came into. I wanted to revisit this because honestly, it was a long time that I wanted to talk about the Resident Evil 5 controversy, but you know, there was always other videos and ideas that sort of came down to fruition. But today I wanted to really understand the roots of it. And while yes, there is genuinely some things that you can say are a little out of place for Resident Evil 5. There's nothing that stops this game from properly being remade in the way that it is or initially existed. I do, however, think, obviously, going forward, Resident Evil 5, if they do remake it, maybe touch up some of the writing, restructure some of the environments, because there are portions that drag on. But this whole debate about Resident Evil 5 being this racist game clearly is one where I think a lot of these people are very much reaching when it is obviously if you look into the actual development and you look into the people making it it's not like it's a game made by like a neo-nazi group or something right to, to spread some crazy message it's very much a game that is a product of its time and that's all you can really say about Resident Evil 5 and I think that's one of the reasons why now that this topic is being reintroduced the amount of people laughing at IGN is about the same. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.